Hi crafters, today I would like to show you how to make this hobby horse. got uh, an idea of a pattern and my material and I'm just going to start trying to sketch it out and see uh, what I can come up with. I think that's a pretty good size so I'll cut that out and make a template and then I'll make a, a second one of this opposite and then I'll start to make a, we need like a head gusset this part here that will be sewn all along the edge to connect the two pieces and what that does is it gives you volume and builds up the, the actual shape. I just wanted to show you a quick part here where I'm going to cut these. I can't find my little snips so I'm going to have to do it with a big pair of scissors but what I wanted to say was I just um, wanted to remind you that when you're cutting long pile fur, you can't just snip, 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 um, because then you'll get all of the, the fur and cut it like this. You see how this side, it doesn't have any long pieces left on the edge, which is really annoying because it means that that edge is unusable. So I'm just gonna cut carefully all the way along here and cut only the backing, not the actual fur pile itself. I've got my two pieces of the side of the head, like that. So they're opposites. And I've made a template for later. So I always keep a template in case the pattern is really cool and works out. Um, and then I can also share it with you. It is hard to share patterns that are bigger than an, an A4 size because it's not something that is easy to print out. But I'm just thinking um, maybe I do it where I make it so that you can cut out parts of it and, and stick them together. Uh, either that or you could use the projector video um, where everything is smaller but you can project it uh, by making a homemade projector very easily with just a mobile phone. I am keeping the pattern so I've got my head pattern the head gusset, so this is the part that when you put the two pieces together, this is the part that goes around like that. And then I've also cut out a piece of long fur because what I want to do is have the mane there. So pull the head back and see how it's got a, a nice mane. And then I'm just about to cut this one out and I'm going to just double check that I think that it will fit. It's a little bit hard when you're first making it to know exactly how you want this to go. But if I just use the top one. So that'll be sewn from there to there and then it'll round up a bit underneath, go skinny here. And then we want a nice big fat nose, which I think will be good. And then maybe it's a little bit long. So I'd probably start sewing from this area. Or I could half, once I've cut it out, when I'm pinning it, because I'll pin it to the two pieces, I'll start with making sure that the nose is nice and wide because you don't want a skinny nose at the front. I think that um, having a nice wide nose will be nice. So I'll chop that out and then um, go to the next step. So here's the four pieces and what I thought I'll just quickly do is make some ears. There we go, we've got the head all pinned together and the ears all pinned together, which I did shorten them a little bit. 
and then I'll probably sew them on after the fact so I think that they'll probably go about there on each side. first step is to sew the ears. I don't love doing fur through a sewing machine but just for quick and ease or maybe not ease because it is really quite difficult because for some reason the fur always just wants to slide and it's quite difficult to keep the two pieces together um, but I guess because it's also short pile fur I will persevere and try and do it on the machine. So I'm just going to sew from here to the tip and then back here, I'll leave this open so I can turn them inside out and then I will assess the head. There we go, two ears done. And next we've got the head. So I really do prefer hand stitching. I can't stress that enough, but this is just so quick. So I'm trying to think of where I should start and it'll probably be I've put all the pins in badly. I think I could start at the nose and work this way. Yeah, so I'm just gonna have to do bit by bit. Sewn around the whole thing and what I'd like to do now is just go around make sure that there's no holes like here it looks like I got a bit close to the edge and just go and check it and also I was thinking of doing an edge stitch now I only just got this machine and I don't understand what all of these mean so I'm just experimenting but I think something like I don't know that one there would be good and I'll go all the way around the edge all right so we're ready for the unveiling I did a few extra stitch um, you know just all the way around again so I did the first stitch and then I did a like a the over edge one I don't know what it's called um, and then another straight line one just to make sure there was no holes and then yeah yes we've got ears and if we flip it out how did we go the main short but I kind of like I didn't really have any longer fur. That's fine, but I kind of like it. There we go. So the ears are going to go there. Yep. I think it's looking good. So the next step is inserting the, the pole. Now Isabella said that she wanted quite a short pole. And I know it might seem strange that I've hammered nails into the top of this. This is just an old mop head. Um, but what I thought is if the nails weren't there and we inserted it inside, it could just potentially slide out of um, what's in there. Whereas now I can actually wrap part of the stuffing around it until it's quite a big bulk area um, and then insert that with the extra stuffing on the inside of the head. And I think what that's gonna make it do is so that it cannot slip out um, because I think that that would be super annoying. It would. It would, yeah. So It'd I think be then... angry. <laughs> we don't want you to be angry, do we? <laughs> so now I'm going to have a look at the bottom piece because we need an extra circle there. And then I'll figure out what I'm going to kind of wrap around this post to pad it out a bit before we stuff it. Let's it out? Yes. All right, let's see how it goes. Nice jumping. Thank you. All right, you want me to finish it? Yes. So I'm gonna have a look for some names. Names for white horses. Cloud, Casper, Casper, Casper. You like that one? Yes. We might do Casper or Pearl. Pearl's a nice name, especially because we live on a boat. Yeah, we, we're going to go with Pearl for this little 
amazing one. Next time we're gonna do a chestnut one. So I just made a quick fold and I cut it and now I'm just gonna check how that fits. Might be too big by the looks of it. A little bit too big. Just like that. And those are mommy's these are mommy's really good scissors. We only use them for material. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Let's separate it because it's we don't want it to be a large clump. We've got this little bit of felt and I made some little eyelashes for a whale that I was doing the other day that I didn't end up using so I'm going to use it now and all I'm going to do is just take the sewing machine and stitch along there and then I'm going to like cut that into a circle and make it so that that attaches there so I'm not quite sure how I'll do that yet but yeah the first step will be to sew these on opposites here we go so I have sewn the little eyelashes on just along there and then I've cut a little hole and I've made two exactly the same so when we put the eyeball in there now it's all ready to go onto the horse obviously that's hey, can I see? this side oh my gosh, that's and so the hardest part about this is to figure out exactly where the eye goes and I always find that it's easiest first to stuff stuff the item first because then it is fuller and it's not so much guesswork trying to figure out exactly where you want to put it um, because if we go oh yeah here looks about good and then we stuff it and it just looks wrong it's um it's quite distressing because then you have a hole in your item mm. so we're going to stuff her pearl pearl knowing that we are then going to unstuff her so it's just a, a step to, to take so you want to stuff her up? So I've worked out that I'd like the eye hole right here. And I would too. So I'm kind of just yeah. going to... By folding it like this, you can pretty well be assured that both sides will be the same. You've just got to make sure that it's not, um, this doesn't go through it, which I can feel here that it's only a double layer. So I'm going to use my snips and I'm going to go through, see if I can find them. So these are safety, um, safety eyes. So all I've got to do is press that on that, on the inside. So find the hole. I've sewn one ear on and I'm just placing the other on so all I've done is I've got a, a four layer needle which means that I got one and then I doubled it, put it in, and then it's it's double doubled, if that makes any sense. And so I'm just going to hold this wherever I think it goes and I'll sew it on by hand, making sure to knot it nice and tightly. So that's working quite well. You can see what I've done there is I have inserted this string. I had to make a little hole to, to make it easier to pull. And then what I'm going to do is just bring that around the front. And then when I pull it tight, it kind of creates that, that mouth shape there. So I'll play around with that until I'm happy. I have finished the horse and I have just cut out these little brown pieces and all I've done is wrap this one around, this one around, and then connect this to that. And then basically I will leave this one so that it can be clipped. I'll try and make some kind of clipping way. 
and then I'm going to sew that to there and that's solid because I want to make it so that you can actually take the reins off if you wish and we might actually get a little circle or something to attach the reins to the bridle it will help if I say the right names maybe the bridle goes there maybe this comes down to there you can Google this, there's no rules, you can do whatever it is that you think suits best. I think that for me that looks good. So what I might do is just fold that over so that it can be connected with a um, like one of those connection rings that I have. I think that'd be good. Good morning crafters. It is taking me a really long time to finish each video, but I am getting there. I've made lots of things and I've got a million things planned to make videos for. And um, this one here is the, the hobby horse that my daughter requested. So instead of doing the projector idea with the pattern that I'm going to upload for you on my website, I've done it so that you can just print and, for example, here's the head you can sticky tape this together. So you need to put this with this with this and then cut that out and that will be the, the size and shape of your head. So there's head part one, part two and part three. And behind there you've got the base which you need to cut out one off. And then here we've got the head gusset. So starting, <clears throat> excuse me, down here you've got your squares which will match up with the square on the head. And you're going to sticky tape this part and this part together and cut this out as one piece. And then over here, we've got another piece, which is the, the long pile fur. So you're going to get a little bit of um, fur that's longer than the rest of it for the mane. And you'll stitch those two together there, not sticky tape, because these are two different types of fur. And then you've got the, the ear, which you need four of. But other than that, it's a super simple pattern and I hope you have fun making your hobby horse.